Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Keith. This is Vintage Fishing Real Rescue. This channel is dedicated to restoring, saving vintage and non vintage fishing reels from the garbage. Um, like to pick them up at flea markets, estate sales, garage sales, thrift stores, wherever I can find them. I even get people that you give them away because they don't know what to do with them. Um, today we have on the bench this South Bend. It is a number 550 level wind anti backlash casting reel. Has this? This is the first time I've seen this. This little spring loaded deal here to put a little pressure on the line when you're reeling it that is different it is a level wind this reel seems to work it's got some stiff spots in it it is quite dirty um, it gets to the ends and a little bit stiff in the end I think it's just gonna be a little lubrication issue uh, this is made in the USA I do not know the age of this particular reel I'm believing it is somewhere uh, 40s, 50s, probably see, could possibly be in the 60s, I'm not sure. So today we're going to take this apart, service this, and get it back out on the water fishing where it should be. I think this one's going to turn out pretty good. The uh, case is not all tarnished, chipped up, you know, the coating on it's pretty decent. There's a little rough spot here that may just be some tarnish or it could be the chrome flaking off, but... Overall, it looks to be in pretty decent shape for the age that it is. And let's get this serviced and get it back out on the water. Right. First, uh, first remove the handle here and then we'll remove all the cover screws. It's best to use a socket. I don't have my socket set handy today. So I'm going to use this pair of vice, or pliers. The nut is not very tight, so I spin it right off pretty easily. I'm going to set the nut in my parts bin. I'll take the handle, set it over there too. We'll start removing these screws. We want to pay attention for length and diameter and position of them. There's two screws here on the foot, and there's two on these two rods, and then we have the level line piece there. So let's start pulling screws out. Does not look like this one's been apart. These screws don't look like they're damaged or anything. It is possible, but they're actually quite a small slot of them screws, so it's hard to get the screwdriver into it. You want to try to use a good screwdriver when it's not all mangled up. You don't want to damage the screws. And you want to be able to get them out without stripping the head on it. I'm guessing this probably has not been used in salt water because of the condition of it. And none of the screws happen to be damaged. A lot of times the screws will be all corroded. Uh, or corroded in the body and do not want to come out. But these ones seem to be coming out nicely. The case is in nice condition. So... More than likely always been used for fresh water or very well taken care of. And pull this off. We want to watch for any parts that may fall out. I'm seeing a spring inside this cover. Looks like it pushes on this or it's out of place. So I want to watch where that is if I can. I'm going to hold the spool because that will come out through the front also. But Okay. Main gear is staying with the body of the fishing reel. This is the spring I was talking about that pushes against the inner case. Things got some old grease in here. Not eh, there is dirt and debris down in here, so we'll get that all cleaned out of there. And then this one I think I'm going to clean as I go along. Use Q-tips to get all this out of here the best I can. In the uh, areas that can't fit like a paper towel or something else into there. I do have plastic and brass brushes and such that I use at times also. But this is no, not necessary right now. I 
I want to be careful using paper towel and stuff for on these springs. You can snag the spring and pull it right out of place. It's always a good idea also to take pictures as you go along so that if you do knock something out of place, something falls out, maybe you got a picture where it was or you can get an idea how it goes back in. I've had that happen. I have the video to go back and review, so it works well for me. Use a little bit of my chrome polish here and let that set while I'm doing the rest of the reel. And that'll, uh, I think this is going to clean up pretty nice. Scrubbing it with an old green scrubby. This scrubby's definitely had seen a lot of use. I like it. It's not real abrasive. It's not going to damage anything. And it's already most of the, a lot of the little pieces that come off as you scrub stuff pretty much a lot of them's already knocked off so it doesn't leave a lot of pieces to worry about you know you don't want to get that stuff inside the reel you want to make sure you clean all that back up real good all right get some chrome polish on that that should clean up pretty nice it'll also help remove dirt and greases off of the case i use this number seven chrome and metal polish Got it at the auto parts store. It works pretty well. Pull the main gear off. It is in pretty nice shape. I don't see any damage to the teeth so far. It does have another gear on the back of this. As you can see, that runs the level wind, I believe, right here. I'm going to take my uh, plastic brush and brush the stuff out of the gear. Get it all out of the teeth here. This one's not real bad at all. Not, not a lot of dirt down in here. Not a lot of gelled up hardened grease. Stick that in my parts tray. Okay, this spool does not come out through the front. This is another one that comes out through the back. That's the second one that uh, Sunnybrook I did earlier also did that, which... Actually, I could pull that through the front if I pull that screw out of that level wind. That front cover will come right off. That gear seems to be staying on that spool, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to pull the screw off of this. I'm going to leave that on there for right now, actually. leave the Bring the level wind right with the front cover. There we go. This level wind guard here, and you're going to want to clean that all up and polish it up. Let's see here. This here. I'm going to be careful about that. That was felt like it was spring loaded. That may be what that piece of spring right there operates, actually. I'm thinking that it is. see here see if we can figure this out real quick yes this here actually pushes on it too that's interesting pull that piece out want to note that this sticks to the front cover let's pull this screw I'm gonna hold the level wind shaft we'll pull this screw get this gear off of here how good the screw is coming out. Now that screw looks like it's a smaller diameter and smaller length. We want to set that in a little different location in the parts thing. Don't want to mix that up with the cover screws. Pop this gear off that shaft. There is looks to be a brass washer behind the gear. Oh, no, it's just a bushing. Good. Okay, so we'll stick the gear over here. This... I can get this all covered, cleaned up, and we'll get it to setting with polish on it so the polish can do its magic. And using penetrating oil as a cleaner, it works really well. Penetrating oil has solvents in it that uh, help break up that old grease and grime. Wipe 
the oil off and then we'll get it, uh, the polish put onto this cover and uh, let it sit off to the side for a little bit don't really need to use a lot of polish just a little drop here and it goes a long way I like to use the abrasive, this green scrubby, when doing this, even for the polish, because it'll help get more of the tarnish and stuff off the case or off the chrome without damaging anything. Set that over there. I'm going to take the screw out of this level wind arm. You want to be careful not to bend or damage this piece here. So you don't want to really put pressure on that. You want to hold it down here. Get this little tiny screw out. These will be fun to put back in. But I want to get this off here so I can brush the grooves out on that. I'm going to get a smaller screwdriver. That one does not want to fit. I have these smaller set of screwdrivers here see if I can find a little more fine tipped one it fits in there a little better nope Ooh, this one's really small that might not work either if I can't get it I'm not gonna try not to damage it so may end up having to stay it's probably going to stay in there i don't want to damage it i believe i can get it cleaned up good enough and lubricated so we'll use my plastic brush clean anything out of these screws i'll put a little penetrating oil to help break stuff up it was getting a little bit stiff reeling as it got close to the ends of this piece as this piece goes across so I'm thinking there's probably gunk down in there in those grooves so I'm gonna spin that back the other way and clean these out yeah you can see some gunk down here on this end so use my piece of scrubby and get that cleaned off the best I can Problem using those green scrubbies while doing that is them grooves are sharp edges and they like to catch that and it gets wound up in there. So you want to be sure to brush the uh, grooves out really good and try to make sure you get all that stuff out of there. Okay. Yeah, it's working. It feels a lot better. So let's go ahead and put just a little bit of oil on this. Work it a little bit and make sure that gets good and lubricated. Okay, let me set that in my parts tray. Get this spool out of here. We'll get this cleaned up. Wipe the dust off. It's been sitting around a while. And we'll go after it with the polish. I think this reel is going to turn out pretty nice. I think this chrome's in decent shape on this for the most part. I believe this one's going to polish up pretty good. This reel wasn't really working all that bad. Just a little bit stiff towards the ends, uh, you know, on the end of the level wind, you know, when it got toward the sides, side covers, it would stiffen up a little bit on the reeling, but I think we'd get that worked right out of it. I think we already have actually, like, lubricating, cleaning that uh, level wind drive piece. All right, we'll get some polish on that. We'll let that sit over there. We'll do the same thing with this cover see if we can get this nice and shiny 
this is the cover that's got that little bit of tarnish on it that's probably not going to work i'm going to use a little steel wool on that that maybe may help this is a four aught steel wool super fine so it's not going to damage the chrome works real good for polishing and getting the tarnish off not going to bother pulling them screws out and getting those sh uh, them shafts pulled off this back piece leave them in place helps keep the reel in alignment i don't really see a reason i can get work around them i don't see a reason to bother pulling them and risk losing the screws and have trouble getting the screws back in and such so Foot all cleaned up, and yeah, that chrome looks like it's coming right around really nicely. A little bit more polish, a real lot, a little bit goes up quite a ways. Yeah, you can see that chrome's gonna shine decent. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting into, but not going to worry too much about that. All right, get this level line guard cleaned up here, and uh, then we'll start lubricating and reassembling and see how this one turns out. Really like these old reels. I like them on. I like the new ones. Don't get me wrong. I really like using this vintage stuff, getting it out of the water, and good conversation piece, too. You don't have to have the most expensive and best quality to catch fish, but these are usually pretty good quality. A lot of today's stuff's, you know, plastic, lightweight, cheap made. Not all of it. There's definitely some high quality stuff out there. Don't get me wrong, but... Well, there's a lot of low quality, just like back in the, the day these were made, too. There's definitely lower quality reels. Uh, it has to do with price point and you know, what you can afford. So we got that polished up. We'll let that set a minute. Wipe my table off here. Grab uh, this little piece here and see if we can do a little bit of polishing on this. Chrome looks like it's in good shape. A little bit tarnish on it. I think she's going to clean up real good, really. Yeah, that actually cleaned up pretty nice. Got that tarnish off it. Now it's shiny and not yellow anymore. All right. Grab a piece of paper towel here. This is the first piece we polished. The polish is tacky on it. So we'll go ahead and start cleaning this off. It's going to shine up nice. It's cleaning up pretty good. I like to use these Q-tips get down in these tighter areas that I can't get down in very well and get all the stuff out of it and get it all cleaned out. Q-tips work pretty well. I 
Yeah, it's shining up pretty good. And cover. Now we'll do the back one here. A lot of this one you're not really going to see much when this reel is assembled. You'll see these edges here, but that's all hidden, and then obviously the back side's all hidden. But I like to use this chrome polish. It also puts a protective coating on it, uh, so it will last longer. It will look nice a lot longer. They just don't make a reels like this anymore, you know. Kind of like the old cars, you know. They just don't make them with that much chrome anymore. Everything nowadays is plastic, graphite, fiberglass. Yeah, this is shining up pretty nice. Just about got this cleaned up or wipe, you know, all the polish off of it. That was that turn or that was not tarnished, that is where the chrome plating is peeled off. But that's alright, you know, it gives it a little character, shows its age. piece is cleaning up pretty nice too. This was all yellow from tarnish and age. It's shining up pretty good. Okay. All right, now let's start reassembling here. Start by lubricating a little here. There's a little grease down here. I want to get out of here. I didn't didn't catch earlier. Right down here. There we go. That's pretty good. Get as much of that out of there as you can. That grease dries up, gets hard, and then that causes issues. So this reel was working pretty good. I'm gonna use a little bit of synthetic grease down in here. That's the uh, where that axle rides for this spool. Put just a little bit right there in that area where that clicker is just to give it a little lubrication. Keep it all moving nice and free. Don't want too much down there. I'm going to get that excess out of there. There we go. Okay, put just a touch on the end of this. This is Super Lube. It's a multi-purpose synthetic grease. It is rated for salt water use. That's why I like using it. It also, as many of my other videos I've stated this, it is rated for negative 45 degrees below zero and 450 degrees above zero. So it very, very wide range. I don't believe you're going to be fishing in either one of those temperatures. Uh, so it, this works really well. It keeps the reel working nicely. Take this back apart next year. This stuff won't be all dried up and hard it'll be in good working shape you know just clean the old grease out re-grease it and put it back together it also will help protect the reel protect these components and pieces from getting tarnished and rusty and everything even though this is chrome plated and that chrome peeling peels off and then the rust starts i want to put a little bit of oil right on these pivot points and on this spring that spring will move it is a wear point
this here is part of the drag system. It ha uses spring pressure against the spool. You can see where it's the uh, gold color there. That's where this rides and it pushes against that to slow the spool down. You turn this knob to apply pressure and onto that on that arm which in turn applies it to there. I just backed it all the way off. I'm gonna back off this spool adjustment here. Oops, I backed it off too far. Come right off. That way we can recenter the spool when we get this all back together. I'll loosen this one. Put just a little bit of grease down into there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of grease down in here in this bushing. That's where the main shaft and gear ride and that'll help lubricate that. We've got the main gear here. I'm going to lubricate the shaft. The main gear don't need a lot of grease. A little bit goes a long way. Uh, too much grease can gum up the reel just as bad as the old dried up grease or not enough grease. I like to fill the teeth on these gears with the grease. That way it uh, gets everywhere it needs to be and helps keep everything from wearing. Noticing this has some nice brass gears in it. There we are. They're not going to rust and corrode like the steel. Okay. I already hit the grease on that gear. Okay. Now let's start reassembling here. And start by putting this cover back on or this piece back in place. This should only go one way. They have these, these two are close together, those two are far apart, and you have the, uh, I'm sorry, the level wind shaft that rides right there. We probably want to put that piece back in too. That's another part I almost forgot. This groove here where this wire rides in, you want to make sure to clean that out and lubricate it lightly. Get any debris and dirt and anything out of there. I like to use just a real light coat of grease in there. You don't want a lot, especially because this if you drop this thing in the sand, the sand's going to stick to that grease if you got a lot in there. But a light coating works well. Okay, that end of the axle just sets there. I'm going to put a little grease on the end of that axle shaft. Help keep it from wearing in the case. It just goes straight, straight through. Also, at this point, I want to remember to put my that wire piece on this guy here. I don't want to forget him. He was actually stuck through the front cover. So we want to get that back on there where it was at. Yeah, no, I'm wrong. It was actually stuck through the back cover. I'm wrong. This goes right through like so. Wait a second. Might have to review the video on that. I may be wrong on how that was. If I could have gotten this screw out, I could have put this shaft in after the front cover was on. But with that screw not wanting to come out, I have to put it in now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the level wind more toward the forward end of the reel. So that way this is sticking out and then I can spin it right into the hole. And I don't have to worry about trying to line it up at this point. Yeah. Oh, I'm making a mistake. It goes on this. <laughs> Forgot this piece. This goes into this cover. Sorry about that. There, just like that. Now we can put this cover on. So we've got a few things to line up here. This has to line up there. We've got these four pins. So, and the uh, spool shaft. So we don't need that extra piece with trying to line up that level wind shaft right at this point. So there we are. Now we can slide that all the way on and then we'll get the this pin just fits into the case right there. Okay. Now we can spin our level wind shaft 
and get it all the way through the case where it's supposed to be like so okay now this we have that little gear where did I leave that uh oh See where I placed that at. It's stuck here somewhere. Not stuck to that. Not stuck to that. Not on that. Here it is. <laughs> Good use of the parse tray right there. Okay, this is a square, so it fits right onto the end of that square shaft. This is also recessed right here for the head of that screw to sit down into. I don't know if you can see that. This side is flat, sits against that brass bushing, which reminds me right now I should lubricate that brass bushing just to make sure I don't forget it. That'll help keep the brass on brass from wearing. Okay. That's on. We'll get that little, little tiny screw. Hopefully I can get it restarted. Probably gonna have to grab a my screwdriver here and use it to start it. I don't like doing that, but my fingers are too big to do that without. So we'll put a little grease on the end of the screwdriver. That'll help hold the screw on there. Hopefully, don't want to drop that and lose it. I may not get that to stick to the end of that screwdriver very well. We'll just have to try to set it in there and then... There we go. I was able to turn it with the tip of my thumb. I want to hold that level wind shaft in place while I turn that screw in. Oops. Knocked it right out. Screw's got a very fine slot on it. The screwdriver, I don't have one fine enough. I use this screwdriver to get it out. So it will put it back in. I wish I had a little finer tipped screwdriver. It would fit a little better. See, these little screws can be a real pain. Bigger fingers don't like to... They don't like to work well together. Okay, make sure that's still on the end of that shaft. I can snug that down. May have to hold the gear from turning. There we are. Okay, now this cover, I get this all back into place. Kind of got pulled apart while I was working on it, but that's okay. There we are. Okay, that's in place. That shaft's in place. So now, lubricate this shaft where my main gear rides. Right there. I'm going to lubricate the cover right behind it because it does rub on that. In part of it does make sure everything's here is lubricated we can put the main gear on there we line up the teeth on the gears so they're all meshing Now we'll put this front cover on. We've got all the rest of the pieces in here. Main shaft to go through there, and then this spool is going to be in there. So main shaft. Watch the spool go into its opening, and then we slip, slip that on, and we just twist it around, get all the holes lined up. I'm going to have to clean this back up. I got grease on my fingers; it's getting all over the case, but that's fine. 
that little bit of grease will help put a protective coating on it also. The more protections better. It's really amazing how long some of these reels have been around. 50, 60, 70 years and they're still in great shape. I think that's what I really like about these old reels. And they're, most of them are very simple and they're very well built. Um, I believe I read somewhere a lot of times like watchmakers were involved with making these reels. You know, like the gearing and the drive and everything. Uh, it's something I read on the internet, so we'll take it for what it's worth. But I believe somebody with some skill like that had to be involved with engineering these and getting them built. I want to be careful you want to start make sure you get these started straight and like I say I always try to start them by hand whenever you can just so you can feel what they're doing if they're gonna turn start straight or not I gotta get these covers in I do have that level wine guard I still need to get in place kind of waiting I'm using this these pieces to hold the reel together hopefully I can still get that in there okay shouldn't be a problem you can see that it has a wide side and a short side. The short side goes toward the front because it has to sit in behind. Now oh, this might be a pain to get this in here now. I should have put it in earlier, I guess. Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to put this side all the way together and then I'm going to pull the back side off. Then I that will um, help me to get that in there a little easier and it'll hold all the gears and everything together and want to fight all that stuff in a little bit here. Yeah, the screwdriver just wants to slip right out of that slot. Do not need to over tighten these, just snug is good. You can bend the cover, dent the cover, and cause alignment issues if you over tighten them. And you can also strip them out, especially if they happen to be chrome plated brass. Let's get all these snugged up. We're going to pull that back cover off. That'll make it a lot easier because all this stuff will be, most part, will be held together by the other side. And I just seen that there's one, hopefully, uh, that one there. I may have to pull that screw back out of the other side. And like the forward front cover, it looks like all these screws are going to be the same size. One screw right here back out as it is part of the rear cover or riveted to it however you want to I believe it is okay, let's pull that back cover this will actually come with it which is fine it's not hard to get back into place okay, it slides right in we'll get the level wine guard put into place there's two little tiny holes in the bottom of it that they fit into there's little pins on the ends here these can sometimes be a real pain no matter what to get them in there it's very tight quarters very hard to move you know get big fingers it uh, can be challenging okay get everything lined back up there's that. The level wine shaft. And now we just gotta get those pins to snap into place on the rear cover, which I believe just did. Yeah, that may have been. 
been a mistake pulling that cover. Having some issues getting it realigned. There's too many pieces here to line up. Having trouble with this pin here. It is a D shape on the end. My fingers are all greasy. It's very slippery. It does not help. Okay, let's get everything lined up here. It's going to be very patient. Take your time. Okay. Let's get this guard into place. Guards in place. Now you got this little wire guard here. There's that. Okay, I believe everything is in place. Make sure. Yep, there we go. Now we can start putting screws back in. It was a little bit challenging. Now let's hopefully we get her all together before anything falls apart. I'm going to snug this screw up so it will hold that cover in place and all them pieces are not going to come back out. Just lightly snug. Now I can get all the rest of my screws started. Get this thing finished up. that one that one there then go ahead and snug this back cover up and then I'll go put that screw back on the front side we'll put the handle on and uh, adjust the spool polish it or wipe it down and then we'll be all done So this steel wool, there is some wear on. You can definitely see wear on this handle. Handle actually a little bit bent. I'm going to try to flatten it out. Uh, actually, I better not. The last one I tried to straighten out, I broke. So probably better leave it alone. It worked as it is. So wipe that off of there. I also like to lubricate these knobs on here because they get sticky and squeaky. I had quite a few of these old reels that them were froze right up and had to loosen them up, get them broke free. Yeah, this has definitely been dropped a time or two. This knob on this end is bent. Like I say, I don't think I better try straightening it because the last one I did, I broke it. So, and getting some of these handles anymore is getting to be a expensive. Actually, they want so much used for them, you can't get them new. I think I paid like four bucks for one of them handles. Not necessarily this brand of reel, but in general. Stick my nut back on. Now again, I recommend using a socket on this. I don't have my socket set handy. I gently use a pair of pliers. I don't want to damage anything or scuff anything up. But snug that up. Does not have to be over tight. Okay, now we're gonna, you can see the spool slides back and forth. We're gonna adjust the spool. We want it centered. We wanna look for the gap here and in here. We want it pretty much even. Like right now, you can see it's extended past the cover and inside this cover. So we wanna get it where it's even on both of those covers. So turn a little bit, turn this knob in and that one both evenly. So I bring this one in a little more. I'm still sticking out of that front cover there we are and then we're going to turn the front one what I want to do is I want to get there so I can feel the play but I cannot see it I want it as loose as I can without it being 
uh, you know, real loose. Okay, I can feel it right there. Just super slight amount of play, but I can't even see the thing move. All right, that's pretty much back together. Let's give her a whirl and, you know, right there, that handle's hitting. I backed that all the way out, so that handle will need to be something done with it. This was the drag knob here. I'm going to turn that back in. I did have it backed all the way off, so I'm going to turn it back in some to clear the handle mostly. You can kind of feel on the wheel too when you get... There we go. That's enough. Now it's not getting stiff I, when it gets the uh, level wind gets toward the sides. I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on that again. I know I lubricated it while I was cleaning, but I'm going to never hurt to add just a little bit more. And it's working very well. I'm going to lubricate. This just rides in the end of this. I'm going to give it just a drop of oil down there. Just in case it got wiped off when I was assembling. That is working really nice. Nice and smooth and free. That drag is putting a little bit of pressure on that because as you can see that handle is going to hit if I back it out any. You can kind of see that the handle is bent down on, you know, bent down on the ends. That one, this one clears nicely but this one does not. I am going to have to try to straighten that out so we'll be able to back that drag back off. And clicker, we'll see, clicker should be, clicker works as it should. All right, this one is in nice shape. This one definitely will get used. Take this one, put it on a nice little, nice five foot, five and a half foot reel, maybe even a six foot, depending on what type of fishing you're doing, I guess. And uh, be very nice. It is a slower. I don't know what the gear ratio is. It's not super fast uh, reel in or retrieve, but looks like it does pretty good though. Let's see if we can figure that out real quick. So. There's one, two, three, four. So it's about a four, maybe 375 to four to one. So once, twice, three, and four. So yeah, about a four, four point. 0 to 1 gear ratio so that's actually not too bad I was thinking it was a little bit slower than that but it would work nice especially you get more line on here get this thing filled up with line it'll pull more line in because of the bigger you know you're you got a bigger area you're pulling it wrapping it around down in here it's going to come in slower but when you get it way out here when the line is or spool is full of line this real feels real nice it looks nice We'll get this pot finish wiping this off and I'm going to take that handle off try to bend it back into shape see if we can get it where I can back that drag back off and not have the handle hitting it I'll try to be very gentle because the last one I broke so um, if you've been here this long and are not sleeping and you enjoy this type of video want to see more hit that like and subscribe button be sure to hit that notification bell so when i post a new video you get notified and you can check it out share it with your friends share it on facebook help me build this channel up i appreciate it also if there's a particular type of reel you'd like to see serviced um if i have it we can service it and if not if i can find it we'll get it and see about servicing it um these also i do sell these online uh, a lot of them i have a large collection I can't keep them all uh, so uh, if you are interested in purchasing any of these reels send me a email or a comment below and uh, I'll send you the link to where you can purchase them at all right thanks for watching